Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now our guest with us today in the studio is a music artist who's done music within and outside Nigeria. His name is Rotimo. And just before we went on the break, he was about to tell me why his name is Rotimo. I would naturally think of Rotimi, but Rotimo, how? Yes. Um, so when I started uh, getting into music, um, I started thinking, okay, what do I want my artist name to be? But because there's so many Rotimis out there, and if you just Google Rotimi, well, what are you going to find? You're going to find all the Rotimis under the sun. So obviously I had to find a way to differentiate myself from everyone out there. And uh, my surname starts with O. My surname is Ogunro. Um, so I just decided to take that from the end of that name and stick it on, on Rotimi and call myself Rotimo. And that's a fantastic one. You know, I, <laughs> it helps your Google search, you know. And beyond exactly. your Rotimo, your styling as well, your branding, in a lot of your pictures, you have this same look. Mm. Is that intentional? And what inspired this look? Um, the look actually came about accidentally. Um, when I was shooting my first uh, music video, um, I, I went to Venezuela to shoot it, and um, I just literally went there with like t-shirt, jeans, and you know sneakers. And um, the um, the lady, um, uh, the girlfriend of the um, of the video videographer for the video, introduced me to a stylist that she knew. She was like, "No, we can't just have you looking like everyone else in the video. You have to be a star," you know. Um, so the stylist basically brought out this top hat that he usually wears himself. Um, and then he just put it on my head. And as soon as he put it on, I was like, ah, no, I love this. You know, I'm going to keep this style. Because I like to be different. I like to try out, you know, different things that no one else is doing. So as soon as he just put that on, I'm like, I'm keeping this look, you know. So mm. that's it. Okay. <laughs> so um, basically, I, I, I know someone like you who have a great musical background. Uh -huh. uh, how? How, how do you know now? How do you <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you see musicians with the difference, you will know. So, mm -hmm. how has your musical background been? Like, concerning family, did you study music or did you study something else? Um, I didn't study music. Okay. Um, I actually was studying medicine <laughs> to start with. Uh, so, I did that for like a year in uni. But um, whilst I was doing that, I was always involved in like music, you know, doing a lot of open mics and things like that. Um, so, I actually didn't finish uni. I just went straight into the music after my first year. Um, but whilst I was doing the open mics and things like that, um, a guy saw me at one open mic at a bar in the UK called Troy Bar, and um, he literally just, you know, he liked what I was doing on stage, so he came up to me and he was like, you know, he runs a band. So I joined a, like, Latin, soul, funk sort of band, and he needed, he needed a leader to, to lead the band. Um, so I worked with him for a couple of years, you know, uh, producing and uh, singing, you know, funk, jazz, or soul sort of music. Um, but I've always had a background of R&B, so I just infused R&B and soul into that to begin with um, and always wanted to put a bit of my culture into it. So eventually when I decided to do my own solo thing, then I started doing like, you know, what I'm doing now. How did your family take you leaving your study of medicine for music? Um, not very well to begin with, not very well, but they always sort of knew that I was heading in that direction. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't a surprise to anyone, you know. Um, they thought I would finish uh, before I decided to take it on. But you know the thing is, like, if you're going into a career studying medicine, you have to do so much thing, so many things, and it takes a long time to actually complete the process and do your specialization and housemanship, all that stuff. So yeah, um, I wasn't willing to wait that long. <laughs> uh, have they have their the position changed now? Have they adjusted? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know when you start getting a little bit of success, now it changes. You know, people start to see <laughs> what you're doing, and you know if there's money coming in and all that sort of stuff, then things, opinions start to change about like you know what they, because at the end of the day, they just want the best for you. They think, you know, um, oh, there might not be that much money or there might not, there might not be that much of a career path in music. But um, it's, it's up to the individual to show them differently. Where's your target audience with your music? I'm sure you'd say your target audience is worldwide, of course. <laughs> but where are you based? Are you based in Nigeria? Are you based in the UK? I'm based in the UK. Okay. Yeah, so I'm based in the UK, but um, I come to Nigeria quite often. And strangely enough, even though I've, like, been, um, you know, releasing a lot of, a lot of music from the UK my uh, audience has started growing in Nigeria a lot more. And um, in the short space of time, we're uh, promoting to a Nigerian audience. I've built an audience here that's probably bigger than my audience in the UK. Obviously, our population is bigger anyway. Um, and on top of that, I think they're just gravitating naturally more towards my music than, you know, than the audience I've had in the UK and elsewhere. OK, so in the past, people actually, you know, went into genres like R&B and soul mm -hmm. as Nigerian musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, people would always say, ah, your music won't sell in Nigeria. People don't listen to all those kind of things. You know, if it's not some jamming hit and all of that, mm -hmm. do you feel threatened by that? Like, mm -hmm. ah. 
I mean, you have to just look at the landscape now. Look at someone like Simi, for example. Or Johnny Drill. Or Johnny Drill, you know. They're, 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 they're always examples, and I shot back in the day. Always examples of people that are standing out no matter what they're doing. Don't get me wrong, I dabble. I like, you know, I like the Bangalore, Bangalore stuff, and I like the, you know, I like the Shaku Shakus and, you know, the Shockies and all those kind of vibes. You know, so I dabble into all those kind of bits and pieces as well, because obviously you guys haven't seen any, uh, my catalog yet, which is still being released. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just do what I like. If okay, people. let's get to see you doing what you like. We have your video, mm -hmm. Surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, we would play the video in a bit. But tell us, when you were writing that song, what inspired the song? What was the song about? Surrender. Hmm. It was actually a funny one. We were just in the studio, and uh, my producer just played um, the beats to me. And we just started piecing together the song. The first thing that came was the, the chorus, and I was just singing, ole, 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 you know, and... Um, I just like the melody and the, you know, so we just put that down and I didn't even think about what I was going to write about. So the song pretty much just pieced itself together. And eventually I just thought, you know what, let's make this, let's make this a love song because, uh, you know, that's what I do. As do a, you like to write love songs? Yeah, as an, R, as an R&B guy now, you know, that's, that's, the most, that's the most natural thing that we gravitate towards. At the end of know. the day, we all need a little bit of love Abby? to color the world. <laughs> this dark, cold world would come alive with a lot more love. Let's check out... Rotimo's video, Surrender, when we come back, we'll be wrapping up the conversation with him. And we apologize, we can't play that video now, but we definitely would try to ensure that we play the video before we wrap up the conversation today on Hello Nigeria. Now, we've been speaking with Rotimo, who's an artist based in the UK, but has infiltrated the Nigerian audience. How, how long ago were you away from Nigeria? Right, so um, I was away for quite a while. Okay. Um, I lived in. The, I went to the UK when I was like 16, um, and I hadn't been. To, I didn't come back to Nigeria until 2015. So between the time you left mm -hmm. and the time you returned, what are some of the things, the noticeable changes you've seen in Nigeria, positive and negative? Um, I think culturally we're a lot more open than we used to be back in the day. You know, we're just like you just go with the flow, and it's not really like we're watching what's going on in the Western world. I think we're just developing our own identity. We've fallen in love with ourselves a lot more. Back in the day, we used to play a lot of like hip hop and R&B and all that sort of stuff in the clubs. But now, most of the music you hear is like 80%, 90% Nigerian influenced. So we know who we are. And globally, you know, everyone is starting to appreciate us even more. Mm. So, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> OK, so what are, what, what are the expectations? You know, your catalog is not yet out. It's going to be released soon. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations for your music? Where do you see your music going? What are the things we should expect to see from you? Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say, I, as I, I like to describe myself as different, you know, it's not going to be the usual stuff that you hear because it's a fusion of a lot of different things. Um, so it'll be a mix of R&B, African vibes, you know, a lot of like uh, African influences, you know, and uh, even, you know, throw some pigeons, some Yoruba, you know, just mix it up quite a bit. But um, yeah, just expect something something different, that's all I'll say. <laughs> okay, we're expecting to see this something different. <laughs> so people can follow you and catch up with all that you're doing on social media, how? Um, the best way to catch up with me is on Instagram. So follow me at Rotimo Official. Okay, Rotimo is one of the people that has increased Lagos traffic because he's an <laughs> IJGB that has come back. In fact, you and all your IJGB siblings that have come back to cause traffic for us. <laughs> how are you people seeing it? Is it good in your eye? That's just a question. Is it good for your eye? This traffic. It's not me that caused it. Oh. Hey. The traffic was there before I came. No, it was never this bad. This Lagos traffic. Really? It's all of you that came back that brought the traffic. So please, people should do and start going back ah, no. so that we can free our roads no, for us. We're staying. We're staying. <laughs> but it's been good to have you. Thank you nice so one. much. Thanks for Thank having you me. so much. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.